Let us pray. Our Father, we thank you for your revelation to John and through him to us. Amen. 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 Thank Amen. you. Thank you. So we turn now to um, two chapters, really, over the next couple of weeks, Revelation 2 and 3, which are the letters, the seven letters to the seven churches of Asia Minor. Asia Minor was the name for uh, what we would now call Turkey, and all of these churches are on the, the basically near the eastern coast of uh, Asia Minor. And, and for a lot of people, uh, these two chapters are really important for understanding the book because there, there's no like beasts and all, you know, all that kind of thing. This is very real. And, and, and yet there's a lot of imagery in it. And so our, our goal for the next two weeks, we're going to look at a lot of pictures. I want these churches, these congregations to, to really settle into your mind as real people living in a real place, mm -hmm. facing real life. Because that's what John is going to continue to address in the rest of the book. And I think that helps anchor it in, in that context and helps us resist the temptation to say, oh, that was Saddam Hussein. Oh, this is the war in Ukraine now. Oh, this is, it really helps us remember he was writing to some very specific people who were facing specific challenges. So now, <clears throat> home audience, I'm going to have to count on y'all to help me out again, make sure that I'm showing you I'm sharing with you what you need to see, okay? All right, so okay. let me get this up here. <coughs> and nope, 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 wait, nope, nope. Okay, you should you probably see uh, some slides moving by. Do you see slides moving by? Yes. yes. Okay. And, and coins. Is it now? Is that now the? Does it fill the whole screen? No, okay. not on mine. I can see slides on the right hand side, but I can see the middle with the okay. picture and coins very well. Okay. Pretty much me too, but the slides are on the left hand side on my screen. Now do you see one big yes. slide? Groovy. Yes. Yes. Awesome. So um you see a familiar image there. Who is that seated in the middle? Jesus. Right. right. Christ enthroned there. He's holding a book. I don't know if you can see. Uh, it has an alpha and an omega, um, and then there are angels around him there. So again, that image of Christ enthroned, sitting on a rainbow. It's a really lovely window. What's the alpha and the omega? Uh, it's in the book. You see the book that's in his lap? Okay, so there's like Greek symbols? Yeah, that? so alpha on the page on our left and oh, uh, yes. omega on the yes. right. It's kind of it's, yeah, it's hard to see. And, and I want us... Uh, as I said, I want us to really understand these places as real places, real people facing real life situations um, that defined their experience as Christians there. And, I, and as we look at these images, uh, what they really were experiencing was this bombardment of imperial propaganda, mythic iconography, pagan bar bombardment, and then we're going to, within that, we're going to see the individual character of each of the seven, uh, seven cities, because uh, these churches, they're part of a city, and this city has an identity, and they share in that identity. Will we get this slideshow? 
Um, you can. Yeah, okay. Uh, so here we go. And we're going to go in order. We're just going to get through the first two today, probably, uh, and then do the, the rest um, next week. So our first city. What would you call these? Like struggles or issues? Yes. Both. Okay. Yes. Yes. And if you and and you you're gonna want to work through that chart on on your own. Um, there's some information in it that I'll I'll cite um, while we're together. But really, for the most part, I'm gonna let y'all work on that yourselves if you want to. Okay. Um, and you're gonna see that some of the all of the churches get uh, get in, in their letter. There's an image of Christ. There's something that Jesus says he knows. There's some sort of commendation. There's some sort of condemnation. There's a message and exhortation. There's uh, issues of judgment and reward. Um, and, and you're going to want to notice there are, there's two churches that are notable. Um, uh, Laodicea, absolutely no word of commendation. I don't agree with our study guide writer about, he says Sardis doesn't get any commendation. There is at least the remark that a few folks are unspoiled. It's not much, but it's something, right? Um, but Laodicea gets nothing. Philadelphia uh, has no condemnation. Philadelphia is the one church that Jesus has nothing negative to say about. Well, about and now look at Philadelphia. There you go. Oh, yeah, and Smyrna. Yeah, <laughs> right. Smyrna. right, Smyrna. Yeah. Um, so, so for the most part, I'm going to leave it to y'all to think about those things as you read through but, but we're really kind of in that column history of the city um, and how, how the images in the letter, there's going to be at least one or two images in each letter that really speaks to that city. So, so first place we're going to go. Mary Elizabeth. Yes, ma'am. Um, on making copies of the chart, I don't know if it's my computer just looking at it on the screen, it's very light and hard. It, granted, I'm not seeing that well anyway, but I did ask Tommy, I ran it by him. I said, can you see this? Do you have a darker copy you could possibly send? I'll, I'll see what I can do. Thank you. Yeah, because it's a scan. Oh, I'll see what I can do. Okay. I, I do. had the same issue. Okay. That's interesting because it doesn't show up that way on my computer. Yeah. Okay. It, it's Was yours light. No, no. So Trish is telling me hers did not come up light. So it may be yeah, mine is good. Okay, Diane's is good. So it's something. It may, it's something on y'all's computer. Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. Lucky us, Tish. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so, so these are the uh, uh, a map here of the seven churches are in green, and you can see where. Um, we're on the, the western coast of, of Asia Minor, modern-day Turkey. You can see a red dot for the Isle of Patmos there off the coast. How and long then, is the boat ride? Because these are writing these letters, so they got to go by boat ride. Like, how so, long? So, not long at all. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it's yeah this is very close. Okay. It's very close. And, but you, you, you make a, uh, it's a good segue. So, so it's not like today where a letter gets dropped into a blue metal box and someone comes along and, you know, who's an employee and, and they're legally bound to deliver it to where you sent it. It doesn't work like that. Somebody had to physically take the letter. Right? <laughs> And, and you can kind of see as you as we go through, you can pretty much so see what the travel route was. They're listed in order. So from Patmos, uh, the the courier would have taken it to the port of Ephesus. So that's our first stop. And Ephesus was a port town. These are uh, uh, coins from Ephesus. The coin on the left, that's Ephesus written at the top, and on the coin on the right, that's Ephesion written at the bottom. Um, and you can see there they're they're cashing in on their on their identity as a port town. So so a port town tells you there's commerce, there's international character, there's sailors. Um, it's this is a this is a big and important city. 
It is the largest city in the area. Um, it, the, there, there have been a number of earthquakes there over the last two centuries, and the ruins of Ephesus are not on the coast anymore. The coastline has moved actually further out. Um, so um, this, this is uh, Kuladasis, which is the nearest port, and it is a huge, you can see, um, resort port for the cruise ships today. That's an artist's rendering of what um, 81st century Ephesus would have looked like. That is a huge city. Um, and and we're, gonna, we're gonna go on a virtual tour of that city. I think you can see this, the, the theater. I think it's pretty obvious yeah. central location. Excuse me one minute. Are, are those people or? Houses. Houses. But Houses. Houses. Okay. No cars. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. So so that's that stadium to give you an idea of what you're looking at. The scale can seat twenty five thousand people. Oh, a State Farm Arena. Yeah, and it would have been that much bigger if it were closed in on all sides. Right. Right. Uh, 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 trivia knowledge here. This is a Greek stadium theater. I should say. Excuse me. Greek theater because it is built into the side of a mountain. The Greeks always built their theaters into the side of the mountain, um, right? Makes sense, you get that natural slope. Romans wanted to show off, they always built their theaters freestanding. So they would build a, a, a round structure and the, the, the inclined seats, the, the, the seats in that. So this, is a, this was dates to the city's identity as a Greek city. So that seats 25,000 people. You can see just below it and to the right, that is what's called the commercial agora. Tell yourself Mall of Georgia. Okay, commercial uh, agora. It's humongous. The, the road that leads from the harbor to the theater is called the Harbor Road. And we're gonna walk up that road. <clears throat> um, another thing I want you to see on here, there's a small building that is mostly white. It does not have a red roof that's tiled, by the way, that's terracotta tiled, all that red you see. Um, uh, it's, it's on the, to us, right-hand corner of the commercial agora. That's, the library, and then there's a road that leads from the library off to the right, and that is called the curate or curites road. So like curates, so the, the lawmakers. Lawmakers, exactly. That's a map here to kind of help you orient. The theater, you see the theater, you see the Harbor Road. We're gonna walk up the Harbor Road. We're gonna go to the theater, then we're gonna to go to the Agora, then we're gonna to go to the library, then we're gonna walk along the Curate Street towards the state agro, which would be like the government complex. So we Nobody are now- fit and it was big. <laughs> yeah, it's huge. This is a huge city. So we're on the Harbor Road, looking towards the theater there on the side of the mountain. We've made it to the theater. We're up in the we're up in the cheap seats now, right? Looking back out the harbor road, and you can see now, yeah, the harbor's not there anymore. The harbor's that's chastering, really. Kind of, yeah, yeah, just bigger, yeah, yeah, just bigger. yeah. yeah. A little higher up. Just reminding you where we are. So now we're gonna to walk to the Agora. Not much left of it, but that does show you this would, the, um, you can see the columns there would have supported that little, that portico that runs all the way around it. I think on this picture, once you know there are little columns underneath the terracotta roof, you can kind of see there are little columns there that would have supported that and then out, so people would have had their shops 
Uh, the expensive shops would have been under the portico. The kiosks <laughs> would have been out in the middle, right? Selling you your cell phone and all that kind of thing, right? Or I guess that'd be the cell phone cover. You'd be getting yeah. your cell phone in the under the portico, right? And we're gonna we're gonna walk out to the. These are the ruins of the library. The Library of Celsus was its name. Um, it was a huge library. Um, it's three stories tall. It had 12,000 scrolls in it. It's a lot of scrolls. And this is an artist's rendering of what it probably looked like. So remember everything we see now, the ruins we see now, they, they're just they're just kind of whitish, grayish, right? They would have been painted. We know that because there's still little, little flecks of paint that you can discern and uh, figure out what the colors would have been. So they were very um, elaborately painted. And this was a public building, so it's particularly elaborate. So now we're walking, uh, the, those folks are going to the library. We've, we're walking away from the library up the Curate Street these are your pictures? No, oh. no, sadly, no. <laughs> you can see the library there in the background. And that's what the street probably looked like. You can still see the library there at the end of the street. Notice, uh, notice the statues of important lawmakers. There are temples everywhere in Ephesus. This is winged Nike. Nike was the goddess of victory. That swoosh that we all know from Nike is an allusion to her wings. It's always winged. This is a um, um, pedestal at an un unidentified temple. We don't know to who to what god this temple was, but notice the bulls. Um, you're going to hear a lot about idol meat and the controversy over eating idol meat. Remember that um, there aren't, uh, meat is rare, meat is rarely eaten, particularly beef, right? That's expensive. Now we think of barbecue as very affordable. You want to feed a crowd, you have a barbecue. But until very recently, meat for a lot of people was absolutely cost prohibitive. And, and in ancient times, you got your meat from the temple. That's, that was the butcher shop. People would take their sacrifice to the temple to offer to the God. Certain portions would be burned and certain portions would be sold. That was the butcher shop. So uh, this sounds strange to us, but this was a huge issue for the early church. What do you do uh, if you want to grill a steak? Do you buy it from the pagan temple? That, that was largely your only option. More challenging, <clears throat> a lot of these temples had restaurants attached to them. And so they would have banqueting there. So what do you do if your boss invites you to a company dinner at the temple to Zeus and everybody knows that the dinner is in honor of Zeus, who is the patron God, perhaps of your patron, of your boss. And there's gonna to be toasting to Zeus. What do you do if you're a Christian? This is a huge question. And it's a far more pertinent question than state-sponsored persecution. There is some state-sponsored persecution. It's sporadic and it's never empire-wide, um, except briefly under Domitian, who was emperor at this time, we believe, when John is writing. But far more pervasive is this problem of how to avoid social ostracism. Ostracize, what's the word? How do Ostracization. I there, that, yes, what he said. <laughs> Uh, how how do you how do you continue to fit in in a society where you're expected to honor the pagan gods? We can flip this and turn it into 1950s America, 
What do you do if you're Jewish in the Bible Belt? Yeah. Right? What do you do? Hide. Yeah. Maybe. Or, yeah. How do you how do you maintain distinct identity? How do you stay true to yourself? What do you do? So so this is the one of the really big issues that they're facing, and you're going to hear John talk about this. John's stance is to stay away from the idol meat. So there's Christian people. Yep. That are going against idol worshippers, or. They're, they're not that there 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 are the problem he's writing about are Christians who are complicit who are completely okay with going to the dinner party where the meat came from the temple to Zeus or Artemis or Nike or whoever and they're totally okay lifting the glass and saying here's to Artemis yay yeah, Artemis gave us the meat right um, and we're doing this in honor of her so that's why it says you used to be this way but it may, yeah, may well, yeah, yeah, may well. Oh, excuse me. Yes. Ephesus, what what city, what modern day city is that? Ephesus. Oh, it's still the same. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, that's Turkey, though. Yeah, it's Turkey now. The and the and the port is, and I'm sure I'm not saying this right. Kuladasis is is the modern day port, but yeah, but there's mostly ruin at Ephesus. It's a huge tourist center. Um, Turkey has deliberately developed it as a tourist center. So they've tried to prevent, uh, well, they've, they have legally prevented development on the ancient site. We're going to go to cities mo mostly next week where that has not been the case, where, where the modern city has continued to grow up and the ruins are in the midst of and underneath the modern city. Yeah, great question. Um, so all of this uh, propaganda about gods and we're a great huge city, it actually carries over into coinage. Um, uh, if you have a minute over the next few days, pull out a quarter and a dime and a nickel and look at all the propaganda on there, right? right. Uh, um, and and um, I, I hear the, the coin in the top right, Again, it says Ephasion at the bottom, and these are various temples being depicted on that coin. So basically saying our prosperity is due to these gods, and so we're honoring these gods. Um, the middle and the top, Augustus, right? That's Caesar Augustus, right, of Luke II fame. So that is Roman imperial um, kissing up, yeah, and pride. And then an actual coin in the upper left, um, um, you, you may be able to make out written on the left-hand margin, D-O-M-I-N-I-T-A-N, Domitian. So the emperor then at the time that we believe John was writing, and he is depicted there sitting on the world. Right? So... Uh, uh, Clearly a, um, a divine depiction of the emperor as one who sits upon the world. And then the bottom row gets us to the big patron goddess of the city, and that is Artemis, Artemis of the Ephesians. Um, and and the, the coin at the right, uh, that is an image of the statue that is at, uh, that was at, the temple to Artemis, seeing both the front and the back. You can see on the left-hand side of that coin, Ephesion, so Ephesus. Um, uh, so they were honoring that goddess. And then the gold coin on the left bottom, you can see the front and the back. The front uh, is supposed to be the goddess, uh, a bust <clears throat> of the goddess. And then uh, the backside, the obverse, is um, a depiction of the statue, the actual idol that was in the temple to Artemis that was so famous in Acts, right? Where Paul, Paul is in Ephesus and a riot breaks out because the people who make tourist stuff and strike uh, images of her realize if the city goes Christian, we're gonna lose business. Mm -hmm. And they start 
a riot screaming, great is Artemis of the Ephesians. This is who they were talking about. And this is her. What chapter of Luke was that? Two, you said? Acts 19. Yeah, Acts 19. And there are actually two that have survived. There, the one on the left was the first 81st century statue that was there. The one on the right was the second century statue that was there. So that one on the left is, that's, that's the one that was there when Paul was there. When these Christians that John is writing to were there, that, that was her. Um, um, she is generally interpreted as being associated with fertility, hence the many breasts. Um, oh. um, that's actually being challenged now, whether that was really... That's a part of the opposite, right? What that, what that was about. Um, but there she is. There's the, there's the big lady herself. And that is a reconstruction of the temple. Um, it's in a nearby city, uh, close to the close to the um, ruins. The city is Selçuk. I'm sure I'm not saying that correctly in Turkey, um, but that's been recreated as a tourist attraction there. It's a pretty monumental looking thing there. That's what it actually looks like today. Those are the ruins of it. They were discovered in the in the middle of the uh, 19th century. And you can see the the town is sort of kept away from the ruins. Now, Jesus issues a warning to the church at Ephesus. Lost your love. Yeah, he's what does he say? What does he say that he will do in verse five? That They've gotten they've gotten away from their first love. And what will he do if they don't get back to that first love, namely their early Christian devotion? Remove their lampstand. Remove their lampstand. Yeah. Right. In chapter one, they said that the lampstand was the church. Correct. So he's gonna take the church away. He's going to, well, let me ask you. I'm gonna snuff out your light. Uh -huh. I'm going to turn off your neon sign. Remove the Holy Spirit. So if you're an Ephesian and you live in this city, okay. do you have civic pride? Yes. Oh, okay. yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. What is, what is it? What note does it strike? I'm taking your lampstand away from you. You not so hot. You not so hot. So it, this is a first century Roman lampstand on the right. So it's just a tall stand, and it literally was a stand because then they just put a lamp on top of it. It's not like we think of a like a floor lamp. You know where the where the light fixture is built into the to the long stand, and if you would like to buy that uh, actual little lamp there, uh, it's available for that was that one was three hundred and ninety five dollars from Zach's Antiquities, and oh by the way, the coin the gold coin twelve hundred dollars currently. So. Notice that he's really talking to them where they're at. They are a church in a city that has a lot of civic pride. They think they're a big deal. They're still in that whole great as Artemis of the Ephesians mentality. He says, I'm just going to take your lampstand away from you. You're not so hot. You're not so tough. You can be snuffed out. If you're just if you're just gonna fade, if you're not gonna have a light at the top of your light stand, lamp stand, you don't need a lamp stand. That really would have spoken uh, pretty humbling to that kind of congregation. So let's go to Smyrna.
Smyrna. Smyrna. And Smyrna, uh, you can see it's north and a little bit west of Ephesus, right? Um, Smyrna had been actually destroyed in 600 BC. So notice what I said, destroyed in 600 BC. It was a prominent city. These are incredibly ancient cities. By the time John the seer is writing, they are already cities that have their roots in antiquity. What they would have considered antiquity. What's antiquity, sorry? Way long ago. Okay, got it. Yeah. Antique. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The city was very aware of its identity as having been destroyed in 600 BC, and it essentially laid fallow until Alexander the Great came along 400 years later and refounded it. It was just a little village, really, of no consequence. And the legend was that Alexander was sleeping and the twin goddesses, Nemesis, and you can see in that coin there on the upper right, you see Alexander sleeping and the twin goddesses, Nemesis, coming to him. And they, in a dream, tell him to refound the city of Smyrna. The modern city is Izmir. Notice is what? Izmir, I-Z-M-I-R, Izmir. So you can almost hear it, Smyrna, Izmir, you can almost hear it. Um, notice how Jesus identifies himself to the church at Smyrna. Somebody read for us chapter two, verse eight. Write to the angel of the church in Smyrna, thus says the first and the last, the one who was dead and came to life. Thank you. The one who was dead and came to life. How does this city understand itself? As they were dead and came to life. Bingo, yeah. bingo. Um, the coin at the bottom, the coin at the bottom, um, that is uh, Juliana, who was Domitian's wife. So this is a coin contemporaneous with John writing this letter. And you can again see those twin goddesses, Nemesis, standing there. This is still really integral to their identity. Now, as Atlantans, we get that, right? This yep. idea of a city that was destroyed and rose again. So um, Smyrna, that is really their identity. So Jesus, right from the get-go, is speaking to them where they are. That's a, an artist's depiction of what the city would have looked like. Again, a harbor. Um, I think you can appreciate here, it's a good-sized city, not nearly as big as Ephesus was, right? But a good-sized city. Um, here are ruins there in the city, and then uh, you can see uh, the modern city of Izmir runs right up to them. They've preserved an archaeological park in the center of the city, but there it is. Uh, they, they run right together. Big, broad streets. This is a big town. It is a culture town. It is, um, it is the birthplace of Homer, as in the Greek author, right? What's, what's Callio? She was a great question. Um, the, 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 um, the Greeks and then the Romans appropriated this belief, believed in the muses. There were, were there nine muses or seven muses? Uh, and each one was sort of a spirit of inspiration to artists. And, and the, I, so, so, so you hear somebody say, oh, she's my muse. That means she inspires my right, right, to do right. stuff, right? This is where it comes from. And I forget all of the names, but Calliope was the muse of, dry, of drama and of poetry. And she was considered the chief muse. And so this is Calliope inspiring Homer. Right. Yeah. Uh, notice that there's discussion to um, the church at Smyrna about tribulation. Um, somebody read 
verse 10 for us. Do not be afraid of what you're about to suffer. I tell you, the devil will put some of you in prison to test you, and you will suffer persecution for 10 days. Be faithful even to the point of death, and I will give you life as your victor's name. Thank you. Okay. So, John the seer, Jesus, knew what he was talking about. <laughs> uh, we see here two early church fathers both of them from Smyrna. On the left is Polycarp. Polycarp was an early Christian martyr. He was the Bishop of Smyrna in the middle, in, in the early and middle second century. He was called upon there in Smyrna uh, by a crowd, this, it, it sounds a lot like what happened to Act, happened to Paul at Acts in Ephesus. He was dragged out by a crowd, and he was dragged before the Roman consul, and he was accused of being a Christian and of being one who thought that Jesus is Lord. Remember that the Romans didn't like that. Who is Lord? Caesar. Caesar, right? Lord. Caesar is Lord, right? They didn't like anybody saying anybody else was Lord. So he was asked to burn the pinch of incense and say Caesar is Lord. And he responded, for 84 years I have served my Lord, Jesus. He has never failed me, and I will not fail him now. Now, we don't know. Does that mean he was 84 years old? Does that mean it had been 84 years since he had become a Christian? We don't know. Uh, either way, he's an old man. And <clears throat> if you count back from when this probably happened, mid-2nd century, that would mean he was a member of this church that received this letter. He heard that verse. He was burned at the stake the legend is that he wouldn't die. And so they actually stabbed him as well, speared him. On the right is Iranius. Iranius was the bishop, a bishop in southern France, who said that he heard Polycarp preach when he was just a little boy. So evidently he's from Smyrna as well. This is amazing. And we and we have we have writings from both of these men. Some of our most important early writings come from Iranius, post-biblical early Christian writings come from Iranius. So Iranius heard Polycarp. Polycarp read this, heard this letter read. Polycarp also is often said to have actually known John and to have heard the gospel preached by apostles. And they killed Polycarp for what reason again? Because he wouldn't burn the pinch of incense and say Caesar is Lord. Jesus is my Lord. Yep. So, so <sighs> he heard that verse. Do not fear what you are about to suffer. Behold, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison that you may be tested. And for 10 days, you may have tribulation. And for 10 days, you will, uh, but be faithful unto death. And I will give you the crown of life. So these were real words to this guy. Real words. Oops, 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 oops. Everything is changing. Everything is changing. Hold on a second. Let me get that back for you. What do y'all see now at home? I see Diane. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Let's see. Let me see if I can get this screen share going again here. Just a moment. Because I want you to, I want to go back to that last slide. 
What are you doing, little bit? Come here. So you can see now, we're back to the first slide, which is also the last slide. So I think you can see, we've seen some imperial propaganda. We've seen mythic iconography. We've seen some pagan bombardment, right? It's on their coins. Imagine if every time you used your Visa card or your debit card, on it was an image of Zeus or Apollo. If the cash didn't have George Washington, it had Artemis of the Ephesians. This is the world they live in. Imperial propaganda, mythic iconography, pagan bombardment, and in the midst of that, right? Because Jesus is in the midst of the lampstands. He's speaking to them where they are. I know you, he starts every letter, I know you. And then he speaks to something that's really gonna be a hook for them. These folks had it hard. They're succumbing to some to discouragement, some to heresy, some to apathy. And Jesus is talking to them in the face of that. We're going to visit the next five churches next week. So. So is this the truth? The letters are written from who? John, Jesus, John, John, seven spirits. So, so, so John the seer says that he had this spiritual experience. And in that spiritual experience, Jesus told him to write these letters and he saw these things. Right. Um, spiritual experiences are, are strange things. Um, Julian of Norwich, who was a 14th century English um, mystic woman, she lived a cloistered life. Um, she wrote um, about her mystical experience and she makes the very interesting statement that this was a vision, but well, it wasn't really a vision. That's the only way I know to talk to you about it. How do you talk about a spiritual experience? How do you do that? Paul talks about, I know a man who was, who was taken up into the seventh heaven. He's probably talking about himself, some sort of spiritual experience. How do you talk about that? Does it necessarily happen to you in, in images, in sounds, yeah. or is it just something that you then try to translate into, I will use the term poetic language, that conveys your experience. We don't know. We don't know what, all we know is what John tells us. I was in the spirit. What does that mean? Wow. Wow. Whatever it was, it was big. So, all right. So Ephesus, pride, idols, pushing down with coins, big city. Yep. Forgot their first love, Smyrna, rooted in antiquity, laid fallow, but there was a goddess, twin goddess that woke Alexander up to say rebuild it. Yep. Yep. But they killed Polycarp because he believed in Jesus. Yep. Not because he well, I want not because he believed in Jesus, but because he wouldn't acknowledge Caesar. Would they not as Caesar as Lord? Caesar is Lord. That's what got our brothers and sisters killed. They would not just, it's very simple, burn a pinch of incense and say Caesar is Lord and they wouldn't do it. And people thought they were crazy. This is ridiculous. All you have to, doesn't even really mean anything. Just burn the pinch of incense and say Caesar is Lord. Doesn't even matter if you mean it, just do it. So any other questions? Mary Elizabeth, would you send the, um, I guess the little uh, things that we just got to look at, will you send it to all of us? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I will. Thank you. I will. Yeah. What I'll, I'll do is I can, I can make a handout version of it. I think if I send the PowerPoint, it'll blow your computers up. So be. Yeah. <laughs> but I'll send a, a handout of it. Thank you. I, yeah. Yeah. Either that or a link. Maybe I'll do that. 
that might be that, the best. That way. would be good. The link would be great. So yeah. I'll, I'll put it in my Google Drive and link link you up. So, all righty. Any other questions before we wrap? Cool. Go in peace to serve the Lord. Stands in the midst of us and over us. Same time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, y'all. Good lesson. Glad. It was great. I'm glad.